Sometimes the questions ask, well, you know, does the school really need leadership development? And we say every school needs leadership development. And in particular, in the schools that we're working where there are, you know, high levels of deprivation and socioeconomic challenges and psychosocial challenges, the leaders in those schools are not equipped to, for, for the kind of leadership they have to give. SEEK um, started working in education in 2006 and then um, was formally formed as a trust in 2008. And since then we've been working in education um, around the country, um, mostly in the, in, in the area of leadership development. School Leadership Program, which is focused on, on, on the school leaders. That program we started in uh, 2006. We've run that in the Western Cape, the Eastern Cape, and in Limpopo. The impact there, um, we, we look for two things. The, I suppose the lead indicator would be um, greater organizational health, and then of of course, the ultimate indicator is that improved uh, learner results. And so we track those. Uh, we have a tool that tracks organizational health. All members of staff in the schools uh, complete a, a questionnaire with 45 questions, and that measures key areas of organizational health. And we are able to say probably in about 70% of, of the schools, we'd see a steady improvement in organizational health. Um, and then a similar figure around um, learner performance. Although it varies from year to year, and as uh, you discover in education, there are many factors over which you have no control. So you could be in one school, it's doing really well, and the principal retires, or they have four or five staff vacancies in a year, and suddenly the results plummet, and you have no control over that. Um, well, I guess what we're trying to do is build resilience in the system, so that when those kinds of things happen, the impact is not as severe that they're able to absorb those kinds of shocks. And there's the school coaching uh, and, and mentoring program. That one, we've run, we ran a pilot program with a group uh, of coaches and mentors. Um, which, uh, was, uh, which was very effective, it made quite an impact on the group and uh, subsequent to that we then entered into a conversation between the Eastern Cape Education Department and Old Mutual. We have 103 circuit managers from across the province on the program and they're on a journey of um, not just uh, learning to be coaches and mentors, but a, a learning, learning to be reflective practitioners. So how do I reflect on what I'm doing so that I'm not just a, what I call a purveyor of policy, um, but I'd rather become a facilitative leader, become an enabling um, a partner with the school principals. All our programs are accredited with the University of Stellenbosch Business School Executive Development, USB Ed, and they're our academic partner and we work closely with them so they look at quality control and all people who complete the programs are, are then, then receive certificates from the University of Stellenbosch. You have to start with those who are in the system, so you have to start with the district. So if we're working in schools, we would go to a district and ask where is it that you need help, um, help us identify the schools. So we're presently looking at moving into a new area, we're in conversations with the district. The district has identified the schools, there's certain criteria that we give and they just, they're totally aligned with what the department is saying as well, but uh, we, we don't go into schools that are utterly dysfunctional because normally the reason that utterly dysfunctional is there's a principal who needs to first get out of the way before we can make any progress. So you want to go where there is a possibility of some change, so there must be some receptivity to change 
Um, and then you also want to go into schools that are not on the verge of closure. So you want to know that they're big enough for you to impact a number of learners so that if you can improve the, the leadership in the school and which we then believe has an impact upon teaching and learning, then you're actually going to impact a number of learners. So you don't want to go into a school that's shrinking and that is actually not going to exist in a few years' time. So that would be another criteria that we would have. But you know, the district has the same criteria. Um, and so we work in partnership with the department. If we're working in a district, because we also run leadership programs in, in at district level, as I said, the school coaching and mentoring program is, is something like that, then we will go, um, we work uh, with the province uh, to identify where do you want us to work. So we'll have a conversation with the province and we tap into their priorities. So in the Eastern Cape, it was the um, superintendent general who said, this is a priority for us. And then um, those who report into him got on board with the, the program and we then developed it together with them. They decided who would come on the program. And uh, so that's how, that's how it has to happen. We don't, and I think that's part of the, sometimes the arrogance of NGOs sometimes, is we think we know better and we think we can work in parallel to the system and that we'll do the job of the system. You know, the fact of the matter is, is that the, the, the DBE's budget is multiple times bigger than the, the amount of money that any corporate put into education. And if we don't work with the system, then we just, we just um, not having the lever that we could have. You want to leverage off the system, you want to give the system the best chance of succeeding. And running something in parallel just means that you're, you're doubling up the costs and you're limiting the impact you can make. I think the first is to recognise that leadership development is a need. And that sounds obvious, but it isn't obvious to, to every funder and every corporate necessarily, uh, nor is it to every school. Um, I think the first thing is to say there is a need for it because the, the school principal influences the core domains of, of what happens in a school. It's the school management team, it's the, the curriculum, uh, the management of the curriculum, it's working with, with the community and with parents and, and it's working with, uh, with the learners. So that, that the, the principal is absolutely key to what needs to happen in a school. And the second thing is to acknowledge that uh, we are trying to turn around a, a very difficult organisational culture. That organisational culture is bureaucratic in nature. It is a top-down kind of lead, autocratic leadership and we have to turn, uh, make a major culture shift within schools and, and again when, when corporates come into the space is that they need to model this different way of doing things, a more facilitative approach, collaborative approach to leadership because the system is a very bureaucratic and autocratic, um, uh, has a very autocratic culture. And so it, when, we, when corporates enter the space, they need to come in with a lighter hand and a more collaborative approach. And, and the same with NGOs that are working in the space. It doesn't help if we mirror the very thing we're trying to change. Because we're trying to help school leaders develop a sense of agency. So if a corporate is going to come in and be the, the saviour, the messiah who will now rescue the this, this school, um, we're not helping the system. We're trying to develop agency. So it needs to, we need to come in with a spirit of collaboration and, and that affirms that the real heroes of the story are the principal and the educators and the learners and the parents within the school. And we are merely coming alongside to help the heroes be all that they can be. I, I love the fact that corporates really do understand what leadership is about and how important leadership is. Um, often understand it better than, than others in the system. Uh, and so they really can make a difference by, um, by highlighting 
the importance of leadership and by not changing their mindset to one of service delivery, we'll provide services to you to rescue you, but to really develop at a deep level the sense of agency within schools. Uh. I think that it's important to have a two-pronged approach. There's a lot of talk about working at scale and sometimes we diminish the benefits of working in a micro intervention. I think we need both and we also need to change our definition of what we mean by working at scale. I think we need to start talking about scale in terms of impact rather than in terms of reach. Because I may reach a million learners, but if I haven't improved the learning outcomes with those million learners, I would have been better off starting with 100. Mm -hmm. And the same if we're working with educators. So let's start talking about how can we impact the system rather than how many can we reach. And that starts to change the conversation. So, so working at scale is about how do you impact the system. When you are working in the system, make sure that you're working at district or provincial level as well so that you you know you're asking the question do they have skin in the game are they also invested in this process or are you working in isolation where you have investment from the district or the province you have a far better guarantee of outcomes because they've got a vested interest in seeing it, it work Are you sure that what you're going to be doing in that school is going to improve teaching and learning? If you cannot show that it will improve teaching and learning, then it's a nice to have. So let's say it's a building project. Will that building project improve teaching and learning? And there's very clear, there can be very clear connections between teaching and learning. But if we're doing the building project because it's, it's something tangible and we want something tangible, then we've missed the point. Is it the right building project that will improve teaching and learning outcomes? We want to keep teachers in, in classrooms. Sometimes the numbers of interventions that are going on in schools is really detracting from the teaching and learning process. So when I say the capacity to absorb, make sure that you're not the second, third or fourth um, group coming in to try and do an intervention in a school. Secondly, um, does the school or the district have the capacity to absorb the investment that you're wanting to make. So sometimes uh, I use the metaphor of it's like people coming in and plugging in 12,000 volts to a pen light torch. You know, you're throwing a huge amount at, uh, at the system and it's not ready to receive it. And so you find that the money is squandered. So check whether there, and that there is capacity to receive what you're wanting to do and that there's buy-in to it, and that you're not going to overwhelm the system. When you're going in to work with a group of schools, and it's totally valid to do that, and, and you're going into, a, I, I would say, go into a geographic area, you go in partnership with the district, um, it may make sense for one corporate to go in to an area because they have a, 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 a business in that area or they have offices in that area and their staff come from the area and they want to invest in that area and that makes perfect sense uh, to, to work in that area so on mines and, and, and in some of the small towns and so on it's, it's really helpful when, when, the, when corporates invest in the schools in the area. If you are a, a national player and you're looking to invest in schools then I would have the conversation with the province first and find out where is it be, which schools are best to invest in. Is there a particular area that um, really would benefit from an intervention? And, and the province actually knows where those areas are. So if you're going to choose to work in a, in a smaller group of schools and make a difference, the way to work at scale is can you choose the schools that will take pressure off other parts in the system? Because then suddenly you're not just impacting 15 schools, 12 schools, whatever it might be, uh, you're actually taking pressure off a bunch of other schools that are feeling the heat because those schools aren't performing. And the province knows where those schools are. 
So if you go in in partnership, you can actually go and work in the schools that are going to help the system way more. There is no silver bullet. Um, don't think that uh, things can turn around overnight. Um, so the, the challenge is you, you have to be around for a long period of time and, and funders, when they come into the space, they need to recognise I'm not going to get the results in, you know, in six months or a year. If I'm going in, I'm committing for, depending on what you're dealing with, you're probably committing for a minimum of three years to start seeing the kind of shifts that, uh, that you, you want to see. So when you come in, it's about coming in for that period of time. And I think that the challenges we find is often you work with a school and then they're so used to people as coming in and then disappearing. So the challenge you have is it takes a long time for them to build trust to believe that you're going to walk with them on the journey as they start to make the changes that they need to make in their schools. And they need to know that you're going to be there for that journey long enough to help them land what they need to land. I guess the last thing to say is, are you able to sustain the investment or are you there on a hit and run? I don't know that there's a lot of place for hit and run investments unless you're doing a particular um, building project or something like that. But even then, that needs to be part of a sustainable investment in a school to turn around teaching and learning. Um, but if you're going to invest in, in a school, then make sure you're ready to stay there uh, for the long haul. Um, and if you're not planning to stay for the long haul, then don't build up the hopes of people because it, it really breaks people down in schools. When somebody comes in, there's lots of um, um, partying and celebrating and uh, very powerful people moving through the school. And, you know, a few weeks later they disappear or by the end of the year that group has disappeared and it just it breaks people down in the system and that's what causes them to lose hope. Um, we found in, in SEED that um, something quite incredible and Old Mutual has um, been able to have a sustained intervention over you know, six to seven years with schools that it changes the way those principals, those, those educators feel about their school and about their, their profession because they know they're not walking alone. And so that's part of what we have to give to the system uh, through our corporate uh, social investment is we can let people know that they are appreciated and that they will be accompanied um, for the long haul. Um, obviously not indefinitely and not without wanting to see some progress, um, but at least not coming in for a flash in the pan, which is good for a photo shoot, but it really isn't going to make the difference that the school really needs. Um, you have to commit yourself to saying we're here for, to, to develop leaders of teacher, teaching and learning and therefore we commit ourselves to measure, yes, lead indicators, but ultimately we want to know that we've impacted teaching and learning, otherwise what are we developing people for? Mm -hmm. um, they may be very effective managers of a school um, and everything's very efficient, but if they haven't changed what's happening in the classroom, then what good is it? It's about developing leaders of teaching and learning in schools. That's really what we're about.